At the end of 1914, the First World War became trench warfare. It was clear to all parties involved, if they wanted to end the war quickly, they would need a new kind of weapon. It was supposed to be a machine that can overcome all obstacles in no man's land, but mainly the trenches of the enemy and thus force them to surrender. In 1915, Russian military engineer Nikolai Lebedenko came up with the idea of creating a machine with large wheels to ensure travel over enemy trenches. He created a small model powered by a spring motor from a toy and he demonstrated it to the Tsar Nicholas II. He was captivated by the model's ability to overcome obstacles and immediately approved 250,000 rubles for its development. Today it would be tens of millions of euros. Lebedenko asked for the help of Nikolai Zukovsky, Boris Strakikin, and Alexander Mikulin, and they started to work. In 1915, they built the first and also the last prototype. Wheels with a diameter of 9 meters were mounted on one shaft and the brackets attached to the fuselage. Some sources state that they were German Maybach engines from the captured Zeppelin. Others claim that they were British engines of the now defunct Sunbeam brand. In my opinion, it is most likely a version of the Maybach MB4 engines. No mechanism is visible in any of the photos, so I assume that the power was transmitted directly to the rim of the wheel. The rear was supported by smaller wheels, about 2 meters high, to ensure maneuverability. The number and the type of weapons are also not entirely clear. The tank was probably to be equipped with three cannons and several machine guns to protect against infantry. This monster reached a speed of up to 17 kilometers per hour, which was a very good performance for that time, and the weight of almost 60 tons. However, the problem was in the weight distribution. Most of the weight was on the front wheels, which had no problem overcoming obstacles on hard ground. But in the mud, they immediately sank. The tank could no longer be pulled out, and the project was finished. In 1923, due to the lack of iron, it was scrapped. Today, his replica is located in a tank museum near Moscow. In the next episode, we'll change the subject a bit and tell you the story of the very first submarine attack ever. So don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe.